الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاة والسلام علیک یا رسول اللہ الصلاة والسلام علیک یا حبیب اللہ الصلاة والسلام علیک یا نبی اللہ وعلا آلک و اصحابک یا نور اللہ او بلوڈ نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم has stated that a person who sends one thousand times daily durood or salutations or salawat upon me he will not die till he sees his place in Jannah Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Salatum wa salaman alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah فضیلت الشیخ حضرت قبلہ مولانا شیخ عبدالحادی القادری رزوی نوری دامت برکاتہم القدسیہ فضیلت الشیخ حضرت مفتی لیاقت علی صاحب دامت برکاتہم القدسیہ respected ulama, dearest brothers in Islam and sisters who are listening at a separate place in Parda. Alhamdulillah, we are very fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us another beautiful institution to make ulama and leaders for the Muslim community. Darul Uloom or Jamia as we say in our terminology Jamiatul Madina is indeed a great blessing if we don't have Jamia to Darul Ulooms, we would not have ulama in our masajid, teachers in our madrasas. Who will answer your questions? Who will help you in matters of nikah and talaq? Who will give fatwa? Who will write books? Who will guide you at the time when you need guidance? All these are the products of Darul Uloom who come and play that role in the society. Alhamdulillah, in Durban, Jamiatul Madina was functioning very quietly. Hifs classes were being conducted Alim classes were going on. We had three of our graduates of Jamiatul Madina from Lanesia South who passed the Tadris test. That is a criteria in our Jamiat that anyone who is appointed to teach, he must present himself for a test to pass that test then he will be able to teach so they all have passed their tests so three of them were teaching so at the moment we have three darjas and inshallah the fourth one is starting now from tomorrow 
So another teacher is interviewed and inshallah he'll be joining the team. So they will have four ulama teachers here teaching and this will go up to the sixth years of alim course and they will do dora hadith at this place inshallah. So make show that you take full advantage of this facility and send your children to become ulama. Send your children to become human being. The scholars have said this what I am sharing with you. Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mubarak radiallahu ta'ala anhu was asked this question that who is human being? In other words, he, he was asked, give us the definition of a human being. His reply was, Ulama. Ulama a human being. And Hazrat Imam Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad Ghazali Rahmatullah ta'ala commented on this call of Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak Rahmatullah ta'ala He said that Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak radiallahu ta'ala anhu has not included non-alim in human beings because ilm is that speciality ilm is that exclusivity through which human being is differentiated from animals So therefore, according to him, when the question was asked, who is human being? He said, ulama. So I said, send your children to become human beings. These institutions are made to do that work. It is mentioned in Hadith Mubarakah that there is no ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is afzal or greater than the understanding of deen. Fiqh. And one faqih, faqih means alim, the one who has understanding of deen one faqih is heavier over shaitan than thousand worshippers because thousand worshippers cannot harm so much to the cause of shaitan as much as one alim can do therefore it is said that one faqih, one alim, one individual who has understanding of deen is heavier over shaitan than thousand worshippers. It's a part of, the, it's still, this hadith is going on. There's pillar for everything. And the pillar of Deen is fiqh. And where do you learn fiqh? You learn fiqh in Darul Uloom. You learn fiqh in Jami'at, in Jami'atul Madina. Hazrat Sayyiduna Luqman Hakim radiallahu ta'ala anhu he has given many 
nasihats to his son which are recorded also mentioned in quran e kareem and in ahadith and other books and one of the nasihat that he made to his son this is in mutta imam malik this nasihat is mentioned he said oh my son sit in the company of ulama because you will find the light of wisdom in their company and the light of wisdom make the hearts alive like the continuous rain makes the land alive you have continuous rain so what what do you see you see vegetation you see grass growing you see crops growing so he gave this advice to his son that sit in the company of ulama the the rain the continuous rain of noor will fall on your heart and your heart will become alive so if you don't have darul uloom and you don't produce ulama where would you find those people so to have a good quantity of those people living within our society which is easy accessible to people then you need to have institution like this to produce ulama so people can go and sit with them and benefit from that rain of noor hazrat fath musali rahmatullah taala alay was asked that if a sick person a mareez is restricted from eating from drinking from taking medicine will he not die no actually he asked hazrat fata mostly asked from people that if a sick person is not given food or drink or medicine will he not die people replied yes he will die so then he said same is the matter of the heart dil ka bhi yahi mamla hai so if it is kept away from ilm and hikmat if the heart is kept away from ilm and wisdom that becomes a dead heart there are a lot of people moving around with dead heart spiritually dead hearts because they don't like to sit in the company of ulama you need to have friendship with ulama you need to have close connection with ulama you need to find excuses to meet ulama even for a short while even going to masjid on the day of juma that i will make ziyarat of an alim e din al sheikh hand with him i'll go to masjid for namaz so at least an alim e din is imam i'll meet with him so the hikmat and ilm keeps on coming because of the suhbat of ulama so we need to make ulama in order to get this benefit and darul uloom will help you to do that اتابی بزرگ حضرت سالم ابن ابو جعد رحمۃ اللہ تعالی علیہ اسٹیٹس ہی سیز دیٹ مائی اون مائی ماسٹر سیٹ می فری فور 300 ہنڈریڈ درہمس ہی ٹول می گو ارن 300 ہنڈریڈ درہمس پے می اینڈ یو آر فری so he says i did that then after when i became free i said what must i do now 
what uh, profession must I go into? He said, I started learning Ilmadeen. So I decided, let me go into this profession. <clears throat> and he said, I became so busy in learning Ilmadeen, not even a one year was passed that the mayor of the city came to meet me and I had no time to meet him. The Ilmadeen made him so carefree, so independent. Please, if there's somebody is talking on the phone, you're causing a disturbance here. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So see how, how Ilmadeen empowers you. The mayor of this, before he was a slave of someone. And the Ilmadeen gave him such honor and izzat and self-confidence and self-respect. The mayor comes, he says, no, I got no time. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Aswad Rahmatullahi Ta'ala He said There is nothing more honorable There is nothing something more honorable Than Ilmadeen Kings rule The people And ulama Rule the kings Because ulama have to take Kings have to take advice from ulama to make judgments, to make policies. They need to follow some fiqh, which is the outcome of the work of ulama. In the Mughal Empire, uh, Alamgir, he, he asked ulama, I want guidance, give me an encyclopedia. That my government can run based on that. So ulama helped him. And they gave him Fatawa Alamgiri, Fatawa Hindiya. So he was ruling the people. But when he was making decisions for the state, he was taking instructions from the ulama. So ulama were ruling him. And Hazrat Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza, Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala, the fourth khalifa of Muslims. Today we are celebrating the urs of first khalifa of Muslims. Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. The second khalifa of Muslims is Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. The third khalifa of Muslims is Hazrat Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the fourth Khalifa of Muslims is Hazrat Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this sequence is necessary and this sequence is not part of any virtue. This sequence is part of our Aqeedah. Jannati, Jannati. Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza Shere Khuda radiallahu ta'ala he says and he said to Hazrat Kumail bin Ziyad Nakhai and he said O Kumail Ilm is better than wealth you know worldly wealth dirham, dinar dollar, pound, rands Krugerans, the ilm is better than that. Ilm protects you and you have to protect the wealth. If you got money, the first thing you think of, let me buy a very strong, heavy uh, safe so that people can't just carry and run away or, or break. And then you have, you know, security company, electric fences because you got wealth lying there. 
you got alarm system and you got panic buttons because you want to look after that money but if you have ilm you don't need to worry about all these panic buttons and alarm systems and electric fences the knowledge the ilm will come and protect you so shouldn't you worry when you planning for your children's future shouldn't you worry about these kind of things that i should take him into the field of ilm deen where he can be given ilm deen mashallah allah akbar ya rasul allah mashallah hazrat maulana shamim sahab qibla has also arrived shukriya zo okay so you understand the wealth protects the the ilm protects you and you have to protect the worldly wealth ilm is ruler and wealth is subject mahkum and when you spend money it becomes less and when you spend the ilm it increases i i always seen ulama the more older they become more knowledgeable they become more wise they become they they, they give you solutions very quickly because they they spend that knowledge and the knowledge increased so what is better to get oh what is better to chase in other words should you be chasing after dirham dinar or should you should be chasing after ilm e deen so wherever you hear ilm e deen is going to be given at some place Hazrat Qibla Maulana Abdul Hadi Sahib is giving dars at certain place leave all your work and run there because that wisdom belongs to you subhanallah that ilm belongs to you it's your your property go take it Hazrat Zubair bin Abu Bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala no states that I was in Iraq and my father sent me a message and he said oh my son adopt ilm ilm ko lazim kar lo make ilm necessary upon yourself if you are poor ilm is wealth for you and if you are rich ilm is your beauty subhanallah really if you ponder upon it person is faqir he got nothing but he learned ilm e deen he became alim <laughs> wherever he goes people want to become his khadim and people want to serve him people offer hospitality to him people are happy to keep him at their homes and at their facilities that's a wealth he goes to a shop to buy things they say hazur please don't pay me that's a money you think ulama ikram they hand to mouth no their salaries might be small but from the unseen world they get so much that they become wealthy so now this is the advice of a pious person to his son that oh son don't run after you know making money as people making money sitting in the marketplace run after becoming an alim e deen because if you are poor this is your wealth and if you are already rich this makes you more beautiful because if an alim is rich i've seen ulama who are rich well to do come from well to do family they don't take salaries they serve deen for free and their authority and and their freedom 
and their independence makes them so authoritative that the way they can serve the deen other person can't serve isn't that's a beauty so if you already rich it's your beauty and there's a beautiful hadith and this should be the character of ulama this hadith is in mishkat sharif that alim is a good alim this question people ask very often who's a good alim yes there there are categories of ulama there are ulama as su there are bad ulama no doubt about it but they are good ulama and the identity of good ulama is given in hadith e mubarika when he is needed he is beneficial when you need that alim he does not shut his door he comes forward he helps you and when people ignore him he becomes independent listen this very carefully this is the true characteristic of ulama when they need him he is there to help them when they sideline him he says i don't worry about you am i am a man of allah am a servant of deen i've been built to perform a very different task i don't run after money men i don't run after influential people politicians rich people you ignore me you sidelined me i don't care about you this quality is mentioned in hadith e mubarika the self respect is very important for an alim e deen so in other words we learn from this hadith e mubarika when you go to an alim go as a humble person so you can get the faiz because if you go as go as an arrogant person then the alim will say my doors are not open for you because at takabbur ma al mutakabbirin ibada this is the scholars the sufi ikram have said that to show arrogance to people who are arrogant is a worship and alim should be like that so when you want to take faiz baraka ilm wisdom from him with humbleness he never refuses you he is always ready to help you that's the kind of scholars we need to produce not those who can sell their deen just for little money little favors little envelopes we we don't need those ulama we don't need those sell outs we need ulama who show and teach respect for deen respect for their own selves and respect for the deen of islam and last hazrat sayyidna hasan basri radhiyallahu ta'ala no gave tafsir to this ayat very famous ayat we make dua with that ayat ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة. You know what we are. Oh Allah, give us goodness in this dunya and give us goodness in the hereafter. So He gives the tafsir of this حسنة. He says its tafsir is that when we say ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة, give us حسنة in the dunya. It means give us knowledge and tawfeeq of ibadat in the dunya 
that's hasana that's goodness in dunya so you got ilmadin and if you got ilmadin you know how to worship allah because if you don't have ilmadin you don't know how to worship allah so the dua we make rabbana atina fid dunya hasana we are always asking you allah give us ilmadin and give us tawfiq to worship you and when we say wa fil akhirati hasana and in the akhira give us hasana it means give us jannat in the akhira so how important it is to learn ilm deen and to have ilm ulama deen in our progeny alim deen will intercede seven of his generations from his family don't you need that one person in your family shouldn't an alim deen be in every home even if you are a it doesn't mean person becomes an alim deen then he must go and find a job in some masjid or in some madrasa that's not necessary he can do his own business he can help you in your business you are a father you are a family you established business alim deen can come and join you and show you the right way of doing business so where there's no possibility of doing any haram or, or any deal being done which is not sanctioned by sharia he can grow the business in a halal way don't you need those kind of ulama in your family those kind of children in your family and they can also do imamat for fi sabilillah they can also do khitabat for fi sabilillah they can also travel in the path of allah with their own pocket money i wanted to do that always i always wished trust me always wished if i had money i would have served deen fi sabilillah i would have traveled in the path of allah fi sabilillah i would have gone here and there traveled in the whole world fi sabilillah but my condition was not such i had to take remuneration for my work but i would envy you and your children if you are wealthy you are well to do make your children ulama and let them serve the deen of allah for fi sabilillah so so it's not that children must come from struggling poor families only and become ulama affluent families should be the first one to decide and send your most clever child to become an alim because if you send a dull child what leadership are you expecting he is dropped out from school school don't want to accept put him in the darul ulum and then you expect a thinker a leader no he'll come out and he'll still be a slave so give us your brightest child and inshallah the jamia will give you the most vibrant leader for the society so it's a partnership so you need to form partnership as a society with institutions like this which is producing ulama so alhamdulillah i say good news for the people of durban people who live nearby that you know thirsty person runs behind the water and sometime when the, the generosity is overflowing then the water comes to the thirsty person eh? in the form of rain <laughs> then durban needed something like this the biggest sunni community live here so alhamdulillah allah gave us so appreciate this and support this and be part of it by helping in any way it's possible but your biggest help would be and partnership would be that send your children jazakumullah wa ma alaina illa al balaghul mubin shukran
الله اكبر الله اكبر